Let's talk about 5G, the latest and greatest mobile network that they say is going to transform our lives. It sounds promising. 5G will let us download an HD movie in seconds. That's just hilariously fast. Doctors will be able to perform remote surgery with virtually no lag time. And it'll make self-driving cars smarter and safer. But there are also suspicions that 5G will expose us to more security breaches, privacy issues, and even health problems. So what exactly is 5G? And how much of the excitement or fear is just hype? We all know 3G and 4G. They're the mobile networks we use today. You see them at the top of your phone and they give us access to the internet. But we're now making way for the next generation. 5G is promoted as the best and fastest connection around. And in some countries, it's already available. South Korea launched 5G networks last year. So did providers in China, the UK, the US, and Germany. New 5G phones are on the way too. Samsung released the first one in 2019. Bringing commercial 5G to life before the rest. So here is how it works. 5G uses a wide range of radio frequencies, starting from the lower end, which we already use for television and Wi-Fi, all the way up to what's called millimeter waves, which are extremely high frequency and used for things like radar guns and security screening at airports. This means that 5G can carry huge amounts of data faster. And that's a big reason why we need it. Our mobile networks are running out of capacity. Soon they won't be able to accommodate the growing number of devices we're using. And there's money to be made. Governments will earn revenue by granting 5G licenses. The other reason to move to 5G, innovation. We have more sensors in the world collecting data and transmitting them back and forth in a smart, intelligent, hybrid way. It is sort of like a Jetsons-like futuristic technology. My ingredients and I get recipes that can He's talking about what they call the Internet of Things. And what it means is more and more of our devices, like smart speakers or exercise equipment, will remember and even anticipate our preferences. And 5G will allow them to talk to each other at record speed. You will be connecting many more devices to the Internet for the same probably amount of money and without interfering one to each other. The challenge with 5G is coverage. Shorter wavelengths carry more information but are more easily blocked by things like trees and walls. With 4G, transmitters or base stations can be several kilometers apart. But with 5G, they need to be closer, which means we need more of them. One estimate suggests the US alone will have to install one million new towers. That's why 5G is really more of a gradual rollout, not a launch, because all of that back-end infrastructure will take years to build. What we're going to see is a substantive replacement or upgrade of the core systems that telecommunications companies provide, that's going to be a really massive investment. The problem in some places is that big phone companies have only just finished building their 4G networks. They want to both enjoy the benefits and the, the profits of the money they've put into it, but also they recognize that while there's this assertion that we're in a 5G race, it's not a short-term race, it's a very long-term marathon. And the race is already getting crowded. Some of the big names in 5G are Ericsson from Sweden, Nokia in Finland, and Samsung from South Korea. But one company is way in the lead. Today, it's the world's biggest supplier of network telecommunications equipment. Huawei has been bidding for contracts around the world to set up 5G networks, but the Chinese company isn't welcome in a lot of places. Australia, New Zealand, Taiwan, and Japan have all blocked Huawei from building their 5G networks. So has the US. The Trump administration has even put pressure on the UK, Poland, and Germany to stop them from working with Huawei. There's an obvious business reason for that. Huawei has been crushing the competition and the Americans want in. But the countries shutting Huawei out say there's more to it. For the US and many Western nations, the tech giant is a spying tool for the Chinese government. Chinese law requires these firms to support and assist Beijing's vast security apparatus. Allegations its top executives deny. They insisted Huawei's not in the pocket of China's government. Huawei is basically accused of being a pawn in China's state-sponsored spying. And there's an assumption that, you know, in, in terms of cyber crime and cyber war, 
there's like a block on the east that's leading all these attacks. There's a strong expectation, at least in North America and in parts of Western Europe, that relations with China will become more antagonistic, not you know, due to a military conflict or something of that nature, but on the basis of trade, on foreign policy, on human rights and issues like that. But 5G also stirs up a lot of debate about our own individual privacy. We're facing a future where more and more of our basic household items will be connected to a 5G network. That's a lot more data being collected, like what you watch on TV, where your car is, and whether there's someone at home. It's information advertisers are after, and it's data that others might want to misuse. And so if you are uh, acquiring baby monitors or you're acquiring door locks or you know, any of the other Internet of Things things, really looking at them carefully to determine whether the vendor is committed to providing a secure product on an ongoing basis. Which brings us to another concern, our health. With all those extra radio waves swimming around us, people are worried. Stop marching! Stop marching! Hunderte Menschen gegen den 5G-Ausbau protestiert. People aren't going to have a choice anymore, and that's what terrifies me the most. We've seen this before. When mobile phones first came out, people were worried they might cause cancer. Right now, there is some exposure of your your deep tissues, your brain, some other you know tissues that are a few centimeters past the surface of the skin. But after many scientific studies, the general consensus is there's no hard evidence to support that theory but it hasn't necessarily been disproven either. It's the same with 5G. And in fact, some experts seem to think 5G's shorter wavelengths are actually less harmful than the radiation from devices we're using now. It's just a little ironic to me that people are all worried about 5G when once you get to that millimeter wave regime, all your deep, deep tissues are quite safe. It's really only your skin that's going to get any exposure. It's the same pattern with any new technology, right? There's excitement and wonder, but also skepticism. But we're talking maybe five to 20 years before we really see 5G in full effect. And in that time, new tech is going to emerge. China says it's already working on 6G. I hope that was a useful primer on 5G and why it's in the news. As always, aljazeera.com has the story covered, so make sure to subscribe, like, and follow all of our social media pages to get the very latest. I'll see you next week.